Amen, brothers and sisters. Before we go on to the cost 307, the fivefold today, uh, something the Lord dropped in my heart this morning, very simple word, but very powerful for this season, for this time. And please, if it's for you, take it. Take it to the bank and cash it. He said, whatever we retain, whatever we hold, we retain. And whatever we release, we're liberated from in this time. Is this something, is there something you need to release? Is there something you need to let go so that you can experience the fullness of divine joy? Is there something we are holding we ought not to hold? He says at this time of the year, it is a simple principle to make up our mind what to retain, what to release. What you hold, you retain for good, for ill. What you release, you are liberated from. And so, I believe it's a prophetic parable that we can apply in various areas of our lives, in our personal work with Him, in our businesses, in our ministries. Bless the Lord as we just allow Holy Spirit to show us the mystery of how we can let go of the things we need to let go and hold the things we need to hold and how we can just come to that place where we trust the Lord absolutely with our tomorrow. He is the one that knows the way through the wilderness. All we have to do is to follow him. Having said that, brothers and sisters, can we just pray and get into the world today? Father in heaven, just have your way by your spirit and release your truth that will empower, that will deliver us and grant us understanding. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, one of the most interesting things that happen when we uh, are, are teaching and some of the things the Lord asks us to do, we find an intersection and today I just found such a, a wonderful intersection in something he asked us to do at this time, you know, when we had those ordinations, you had those graduations of the uh, now generation master class, we had the, the ordinations of that African master class and those young people were commissioned Lord said, look, appreciate the people the Lord used to do it. It's not just you and Pastor Grace, there are people in the background, people doing solid work and then appreciated Pastor Ben and Mr. Hadiza and then Teacher Kwasi and Teacher Bridget and the Lord said, no, it can't be only them. Just expand it to the team that work with you. And this morning, as I was getting ready for this lesson number 38, we're in the epilogue series of the fivefold lesson 38, we're discussing vision holders, co-laborers, and the bishopric. The Lord said to me, you see, this is it, that's it, practical, and what is it? True vision holders in kingdom business who are on assignment from King Yeshua will be known by their heart inclination to build according to plan. That's number one. There's a divine pattern. Build according to the pattern. Don't build outside the pattern. Then because of this, they'll be secure enough in what they are called to be able to open their hands and embrace the other foes the Lord will bring their way and who they will develop to grow, to become co-laborers, colleagues, not employees, to deliver the divine purpose. In other words, create the absolute test of true leadership is to create a platform big enough for everybody to be able to be fulfilled therein. That is something the Lord is calling the body, leaders in the body, be secure enough in who he has called you to be and just create, open your heart. Let there be enough room for other people who are called by the Lord to come on board, find their place and begin to co-labor with you. And when they are doing so, all glory goes to the Lord and not to you, men and brethren. So that means we got to divest ourselves of over control of the ministries committed to our trust. And so that we can, in humility, realize that though, you know, we are the vision holders, the people who are coming, the Lord is bringing them away to empower them and to give them scope to be fulfilled in Him. 
Now, what does that mean? Does he say, is it a one-way street? No. Those who are also coming along this way, you are coming to a ministry where there's a vision holder. If the vision holder is open and secure in the Lord to say, come on board, come and take, find your place. You don't come with an Absalom spirit. You don't come to try to, you know, create your own little pocket of ministry within the ministry. Come to just do some of the funny things they do in religion. You recognize that Elohim, in his sovereign decision, made somebody a vision holder and brought you to come and be a colleague, a connector, and a collaborator, and a, a helper of the work. Once you have that understanding, it's going to be a matter of time. Holy Spirit will be giving scope. There will be blending done. People are coming from different backgrounds. Initially, maybe like sand and, you know, you know, it may be like it's not gelling together. But if you are patient with each other, the visionary with the people, the people with their visionary, something will happen. The blending process will take time. During this process, mistakes may be made by all parties. You know what? But if their heart is right, everything will come together at the end. Some people will fall by the wayside on the pathway. Those who are impatient, those who are ambitious, those who want their own, let them let it happen. Don't worry. Don't worry. With time, the Lord will bring together a blend of people he has called. And if the various gifts and functions are not brought together by Yeshua, the fruit will show. Ambition will show. Self-seeking will show. Vain glory will show. But if it's brought together by Yeshua, with time, everything will be towards him. Everybody begins to grow up into him in all things and then begin to grow into each other, serving each other. And, brothers and sisters, another thing the Lord wants to say is this. There may be people who the Lord may bring your way and they are, they are going to walk with you for, say, a short time. That short time, maybe three years or so, after that, they begin to be impatient, they begin to want to go. Listen, if you're a leader, you design somebody who wants to go, release that person. Don't give delay. Don't try to play any game. You know, are you sure? Are you sure? Leave it to them. Release them. And if you are one who is saying that the Lord told you and the Lord didn't tell you, you're already in trouble. You are building on a faulty foundation of a lie. And if the Lord told you, you know what? Onus is on you who is going to make sure that the separation is neat and clean. Don't begin to, I, brother, sister, that one, that is a tighter, that one is a giver. You want to take it to you. If you do that, you are now engaging in insurrection, spiritual insurrection. And the sin of sedition will follow. You begin to speak evil of the person just because you want to do the absolute truth and take people to yourself. And the Lord said, let everything be done, descend, line in order. And its onus is also on the leader. You know what? Meet, separate. The people cannot go far with you. Be sure of this. The Lord who called you will not abandon you. The Lord who called you will back you up. The Lord who called you will be with you, provided you love him and love all and love the people who want to go enough to wish them well, even though they are behaving unseemly. You wish them well. If you're a leader, Listen, there is a, a provision. Never curse anyone. Don't curse anyone. If people do what attracts a curse, it's between them and God if they do not repent. But you don't open your mouth. The mouth is given to bless, not to curse. It doesn't matter what they did. They abused you, insulted you. Don't curse anyone. Now let's go on to the issue of the fivefold and bishopric. Brothers and sisters, you need to know this, and I would like you to read the study notes today. The fivefold offices are gifts from Yeshua, the head of the church. He chooses whom he will. He has nothing to do with anybody being qualified. No, most of the time, actually, he doesn't choose the qualified. He chooses the unqualified and then qualifies them. It's true of Yeshua. So in Ephesians 4, 11, he says, He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, and then he gave them, for what reason? For perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. So their work is to make the body that which the Lord had in mind, organic, where by the work of the fivefold, the grace of the Lord is released and the brethren discover who they are in him and who is in them. They take their place in the organic body and it, it becomes a living, loving organism express. You see that, you feel it, you touch it, 
and the growth is organic, not organizational. And so the fivefold is the instrument the Lord uses to bring about the royal priesthood or the priesthood of all believers. And what he said in First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10, may you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, you should show for the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who in time past were not a people, but are now the people of Elohim, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Brothers and sisters, it becomes natural. The priesthood of all believers, male, female, young, old, everyone finds their place in the Lord because he called everyone. It's religion that says he calls a tiny professional clergy. That's religion. And then the others are to be a dead dormant laity, just feeding, just eating, just consumerist laity. No. Now, what of the bishopric? The bishopric is by personal desire. It is not a divine choice or special calling. Listen to this. The office of the bishopric is biblical, but it's not the Yeshua chooses this when you be a bishop. No, the Bible is very clear. First Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Then he gave the qualifications from verse 2 to verse 7. If you desire, the, the fivefold is conferred, the bishopric is desired. How is it you desire? Well, number one, maybe you're an elder in the world. And these days, you see all these young people in 1920, 21, 22, want to answer bishop. It's a terrible thing. The bishopric actually is for people who are like elders in the Lord, and the Lord is using you, and the Lord, uh, you have responsibility, maybe three ministries, maybe five congregations, Maybe you have a ministry that is church ministry, you have a widow's project, you have an orphan project, and you're seeking to kind of streamline the administrative system in such a way that anybody who comes across them know that these ones have one leader. In that sense, you are the bishop over those things. And in the days of Paul, there also were bishops who were appointed as ruling elders, elders who had administrative responsibility, you know, beyond the fivefold work. And brothers and sisters, when the bishopric is done according to scripture, it is biblical. It's biblical. So those who say there's no bishopric in the Bible, it's not correct. There is bishopric in the Bible. What is not biblical is the Nicolaitan bishopric. We have to say that with all sense of responsibility, with every ounce of moral suasion in this vessel, that the Nicolaitan bishopric is what is unbiblical, can never be pleasing to Yeshua, will not be acceptable by heaven, can never be. The current practice of the bishopric among Pentecostal, charismatic, evangelicals, and independent denominations is contrary to the cross of Yeshua and all that he died for, borrowing the framework of Rome to create a hierarchical structure, a pyramid, the robes, the coat of arms, the ring, the staff, and other paraphernalia, different colors of clothes. Many ministers across the world have allowed the quest for recognition by governments and society to take on something Yeshua passionately hates. Yeshua, his language of Bible is that he hates it. This is called the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which turns the church into a religious organization with stiff hierarchies and classes of those at the top. They live as if they conquer those at the bottom. Look at what Yeshua said of the Nicolaitan bishopric now. The Nicolaitan doctrine generally, of which the new Romanic bishopric in the living churches is based. Revelation 2, 6, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Yeshua. Verse 15, So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. He said, I hate it. What did he mean? Yeshua came to demonstrate leadership as service, humble, lowly service, where you pour out yourself to build up the flock, to care for the flock, to nurture for the flock. The Nicolaitans rose sometime before the end of the fourth century. They rose and said, all these all these serving people, all these being simple and ordinary, 
like Yeshua. We don't want it. The government will not recognize us. People will not honor us. So we need to create a class of priesthood for ourselves. Sit on thrones and, and you know what? If we are leaders, then we are conquered the people. Live, treat them as a conquered people. Use them to do what we want. Boss over them. And that is the Nicolaitan priesthood. That is the deed of the Nicolaitan Yeshua. His. And this is what has been adopted, where you now find a man, answer bishop, and people bought blood-washed sins, calling a human being, a man, a woman, my Lord, and bowing and kissing the ring. And it's so terrible. It's so terrible, men and brethren. And then you have some hierarchies, archbishop, so so and so, then bishop, so so and so, and auxiliary bishop, so so and so, leaving church, borrowing lock, stock, and barrel from Rome, and it is terrible, and the people are confused. No wonder in many parts of the world, people are going back to mainline Orthodox churches because the lines have been blurred by pastors who thought the pastorate is too tiny a, 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 a title. And who thought, well, government will not recognize me. So let me take a title bishop. Let me wear the robes of Rome. Let me wear the cap of Rome. Let me carry the staff of office of Rome. Let me sit on the throne in the church. Once you come into the church, you know this is the owner, the Lord of the church. Brothers and sisters, the Lord says, away with it. If you are the remnant of the Lord, don't participate and don't bow to that ungodly system. Don't allow yourself to be confused it is not acceptable by the Lord, will never be accepted by the Lord. And if you know anybody who is clinging to those things, tell them, pray for them to repent and give up this lordship thing and allow the Lord to be the Lord of his church alone. This thing is taking, this leaven is too terrible and the Lord doesn't want us to continue. And also, just those who take the title chief apostle because you are the head of your network, Chief Apostle, yeah, mighty prophet, the the, the 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 master prophet. These things don't have value. Those who take the title, primate, prelate, reverend, most reverend, very reverend. You know what? Those are taken from Babylon. The concepts are from Babylon. You have nothing to do with the church. And these things, you know what? It's time for the living church, Pentecostal, charismatic, evangelical, to each humble pie and crawl to Rome and bow before the Pope and say, we are so sorry, we are, we are, your, we are your indulgent children, you know, and, and either you bow and accept them or give them back their robes and go to the simple, uncomplicated uh, leadership that the Lord ordained. Now let's talk about something else that is absolutely meaningless. You see some so-called college of bishops uh, claiming to have apostolic succession, supposedly, towards Peter, whom Rome dressed up as the first pope. Well, Peter was not the first pope of Rome. Peter didn't want anything like that. Peter was faithful to Yeshua to death until he was, you know, crucified upside down by the Roman Empire. Peter was not part of all those things. Peter was simple and uncomplicated. Peter was loyal and faithful to the end. So anybody claiming apostolic succession is simply doing what America calls baloney. It's pure baloney. It has no meaning. It has no, it has no meaning whatsoever. Every calling is from the Father. It's from the Father. You don't have succession from a human being to the other. And brothers and sisters, it's time to become who the Lord wants us to be. Acts 27, 23, Paul said, For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve. Get to know whose you are. Get to know who you serve. Don't let anybody confuse you to be part of the plot to corrupt the church, to pollute the church. Don't let anybody confuse you. If people want to cling to these things, let them cling. It's their business. Love them anyway. Pray for them anyway. But don't be a partaker of their deeds. This is the simple instruction of the Lord for us today. By way of assignment, before I call up the assignment questions, can I ask you, you know what? Will you share this video with friends and relatives and make sure the truth of the gospel goes forth? The gospel is liberating. The gospel is simple. The gospel is uncomplicated. Go forth. Let's recover 
the truth of the gospel and let's leave the things of Rome to Rome the city and Rome the church let's leave it for them they will face Elohim on the last day so by way of assignment who is a visionary what are their roles in activating the Lord's desire for an empowered church family? In other words, the priesthood of all believers was the role of the visionaries to bring it about and working with other co-laborers. Two, though equally gifted for various roles, why should those in the other fools respect and esteem highly whoever the Lord has made a visionary in the congregation or the ministry they have come to? Three, what is the essential difference between the fivefold and the bishopric? What's the essential difference? Four, what type of bishopric is forbidden in the true kingdom church? Five, what new thing did you learn from this lesson? And brothers and sisters, we urge you to take these things to heart. For us, in Arise Metropolitan Assembly and Mission Central, that is what is driving everything we do. That's what is driving everything we do, the simplicity of the gospel, that the gospel it is about people, and the people that the Lord brings to leadership is to be empowered to know who they are in Him and who He is in them. And when they empower, they begin to grow up, they take their places, and the work of the Lord is done. And that's what governs also our attitude to international ministers' fellowship how the empowerment is global. That's what governs the Global School of Ministry, how the system, the curriculum is released to all who want to use it to have their congregations empowered in truth and people know who they are in the Lord and who is in them. Brothers and sisters, by the grace of the Lord, we urge you to do likewise so that it's not just one or two ministries, but across the world. There's a restoration of the priesthood of all believers. The fivefold takes its place and the Lord is glorified. Let's pray. Father in heaven, gracious Elohim, we bless you. We bow before you. Some of your truths may be bitter pills to swallow like this one, but we ask you for grace that we will take them in, ingest them, swallow them, and allow it to do its work. And heal us from within. For our brothers and sisters who still cling to the things of Rome, open their eyes of understanding. Deliver them, O God. Show them the Nicolaitans and how Yeshua so hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans. And help us to get back to the simplicity of the gospel program. Father, let this word that has gone forth, let it bring, let it be an instrument of healing and deliverance and empowerment of your saints that they will bear fruit 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold to your own praise and glory in Yeshua. Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.